Okay, we're gonna start with our brine shrimp lab. Brine shrimp are one of the most adaptable animals on planet Earth. And we know that they hatch in like the Great Salt Lake in Utah, so we know that they require salt. So we actually have one trial where there's no salt. We wanna see if they can actually hatch in a salt-free environment. And then there's also going to be a doubling of salt in the experimental procedure. So we're gonna start with uh, seven milliliters of compact sea salt for uh, 450 milliliters of water in trial one, and then 14 milliliters of compact sea salt uh, for trial number two, and then we're gonna double that again and get 28 milliliters of compact salt for trial number three. So once we have the salt mix, we've got four trials, uh, no salt, seven milliliters, 14 milliliters, 28 milliliters. Next, we're gonna take roughly equal portions of brine shrimp, and we're gonna add the brine shrimp uh, portions to the four petri dishes. Then we're going to take 20 milliliters of that solution and put it in a petri dish for petri dish one, no salt, two, seven milliliters, three, 14 milliliters, and four, 28 milliliters, and let them sit for about uh, 24 to 48 hours. Now we're measuring hatch rate and how salt levels affect hatch rate. So now it's going to be important that we get all of our samples on the same day. We'll open up each petri dish, stir each petri dish, and with a fresh pipette, we will plate about 20 to 30, maybe even 35 drops of water from each sample. And we're going to count the number of brine shrimp per sample. Let's have a look and see how things worked out. We'll start off by uh, investigating each of the samples for the presence of brine shrimp, and we'll look inside each drop and we'll see how many brine shrimp are there in each drop. And what we're going to do is we're going to count the number of shrimp per drop, and we're going to get an average shrimp per drop. We can also, uh, for each student, get the number of shrimp total in each sample and the number of drops total in each sample, so we can get a class-wide average of shrimp per drop as well. Science grows by communitarian interest, and we're a big team of scientists. And look at all the data we have here. So we have literally hundreds of brine shrimp that have been detected in many of the samples. But interestingly enough, only three shrimp hatched. Now that's more than zero, but only three shrimp hatched in the salt-free environment. You have to assume there's got to be some salt still adhered to the eggs, so it's not a perfectly clean experiment, but still, you know, there's, there they are. There's uh, three shrimp. And then moving on and looking at seven milliliters and 14 milliliters and 28 milliliters, we can actually see a pretty significant trend where increasing salt at first is helpful and then afterwards maybe not quite as helpful. What would you hypothesize about the shrimp if we were to double the salt again? Uh, well, 28 plus 28, we're looking at 56 milliliters of compact sea salt for the next sample. That's gonna be a highly supersaturated sample, but what are your ideas about what would happen to the number of shrimp that would hatch in that extra salty environment? All right, well, there's the brine shrimp experiment. Go ahead and look at the data, analyze the data, and answer the questions, and uh, good luck.